the Pisco Sour, a classic cocktail that blends a South American spirit with American bartending ingenuity. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make one. The Pisco Sour is by far the most popular and famous cocktail to use Pisco as its base. And despite it being a South American spirit, it was actually invented by an American though he did invent it in Lima, Peru. So what I love about the story is that it blends a South American spirit with American cocktail technique and ingenuity, and it creates something fantastic and unique. And the Pisco Sour is a pretty simple cocktail. It was actually based off of a the template of sour drinks that also birthed the uh, whiskey sour and, and a bunch of other ones. They basically just swapped in the Pisco for as the base beer and it was an absolute instant hit. And if you're sitting there wondering, what is Pisco? Well, don't worry, I got you covered. I made a video about what Pisco is and the history of Pisco and you can watch that right over here. I highly recommend you check that out right now and then you hop back to this video to finish this one out. Or I don't know, watch that one after this one. I'm not a cop. But all right, first we're gonna grab our shaker. This is a shaken cocktail and we are going to do three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice. We are going to do three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. We are going to do two ounces of our achilado pisco. People do say the achilado makes the best pisco sours because of that inherent funkiness that it has versus a, uh, what they call a, pure, a puro pisco. And if you wanna know more about the differences in pisco, do check out that pisco video I did. And then we're gonna grab our egg. We're gonna crack it on the edge of the tin and we're only gonna get the egg whites in there. Uh, we don't want to get the yolk in this one. And like I said, this is perfectly safe to drink and eat. Uh, the citrus and alcohol in the cocktail ends up kind of, uh, it ends up kind of emulsifying the egg in a way almost like cooking it so that it doesn't cause anything bad. It actually tastes very, very good. And the bitters are actually not gonna go in the tin, we're just going to decorate the cocktail with it afterwards. And we're gonna do something known as a dry shake, which is a shake with no ice. And the reason is we really wanna froth up that egg and emulsify it, like I said before, so that this is a perfectly safe cocktail to drink. So we're gonna shake this for about, I don't know, 20 seconds, just to fully integrate that citrus, the alcohol with the egg white. You really want to froth that up quite a bit. Some people make Pisco Sours in a blender. I've never actually tried it. I've only ever made them by shaking them. Uh, maybe it's good. I'll have to give it a shot one day. But all right, let's pop this open. Oh, yep. That's a good consistency right there. It's super frothy in the tin. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Probably not, but it's super frothy in there. And now we're just gonna add a couple of pebbles of ice. You don't wanna fill it up too much because it's gonna really froth up the cocktail and we wanna make sure it fits in our, uh, in our cocktail glass. So I would say, you know, if you have a large, if you have large cubes, probably five or six. I've got some smaller ones, so I'm gonna do about 10 and then we're gonna seal that up again and we're gonna shake again for about 20 seconds. We really wanna make sure we're shaking this one well so that the egg is 100% emulsified, 100% all good to go to drink, all right? And then we're gonna grab our nice coupe here, pop open the tin, nice little frost around the tin, and we're going to double strain uh, both with our, with our fine strainer, our mesh strainer, and our uh, Hawthorne strainer. Oop, and try not to make a mess like I did. And as you can see, it's super frothy. And we're just gonna let that settle a bit to have that froth rise to the top. And in the meantime, I should have prepped this with an eyedropper beforehand because it gets a little messy if you're trying to use a dasher. But really what the bitters does is just adds a really interesting on the nose. It gives a nice clove and that spicy uh, smell while you're drinking. And it also adds a nice, a nice element to the cocktail as a top layer. So we're going to try to do this without an eyedropper. Very difficult. 
All right, it's working. And then you can get creative once you do that because it'll sit on the frothy top and we're just gonna grab our toothpick and we're gonna try to make little hearts with them. And it's not gonna work perfectly, but it worked a little bit. But all right, let's give this bad boy a taste. Wow, what a delicious cocktail. Like I said, the bitters on the nose, and then when you get a sip of it, it makes for a really awesome experience of drinking it. You have that clove and that spice on the nose. You get that frothy, velvety silkiness from the egg white. That lime, the acidity really brings up, uh, really ties it all together with that really interesting and earthy, almost musty kind of pisco. It is a really, really like interesting experience and it's so difficult to explain on camera, but it's just, it's really good. Just like, look at the color of that. It's like a pale lime green almost with a nice like frothy head. Uh, it's just, it's just such a good cocktail. Such a good cocktail. You know, I'm just really happy that someone decided to make this popular again and put it on the forefront of people's minds because it'd be a real shame if this drink got lost to history like probably so many countless other great ones have. But I'm really happy that this is starting to make, a, that this has made a comeback over the last 10 or 15 to 20 years and that Pisco is now becoming more popular here in the States once more. But, friend. but that's it for me. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.